Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm seeing people starting to appear in the webinar, so I'm just going to give it about a minute to make sure that everybody has a chance to join. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here on what is a sweltering day in London and probably the rest of UK. Jose has assured me that uh, it is the same in Amsterdam, where he is joining us from. And so, all right, I think we're going to get started. So my name is Martine Gagnon. I work for UES Education. Um, I am the counsellor at Charterhouse School, um, also at Weatherby Senior School in central London. Um, and today we will be talking about applying to Dutch universities. And without further ado, I introduce you to uh, Jose, who is joining us from the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. If you have any questions, please pop them in the chat box. And just before anybody asks, yes, this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to duck out early, um, there won't be an issue. You will be able to have access to recording afterwards. So everybody, Jose, thank you. Thank you so much, Martine. I'm really happy to be here. Um, welcome. So as Martine said, my name is Jose. I'm the external engagement officer at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. I also include my email address on the screen. If it's easy for you to send an email directly to Martino to me, you know, feel free to do so, whichever suits you. Um, just a bit about myself. I used to be a student at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences studying international business, which I will mainly be talking about later today. So feel free if you have yeah, any specific questions related to student life or how I experienced my time as a student at university, just let me know. Um, more than happy to answer those questions. Um, I did my master's in the UK in Newcastle. So I really like the UK and uh, yeah, let's, without further ado, let's uh, dive into it. So I'm not sure to what extent you're familiar with the Netherlands and if you've been to the Netherlands before, but the Netherlands is quite a tiny country. It's definitely not as big as the UK. It takes approximately four hours by train all the way from the north to travel down to the south. Um, and especially like the Randstad, which is like the eastern part of the country close to the coastline, especially that part of the country is super well connected. Um, so yeah, it's quite easy to go from one city to the other. So when you consider studying in the Netherlands, I'm quite sure that you will run into two different types of universities, universities of applied sciences and research universities. But for you, it's key to understand the differences um, because essentially both types of universities are very good universities. It's just that their approach is slightly different, which I will talk about in a bit. Um, so there are some programs and disciplines that you, you can exclusively study at universities of applied sciences. Think for example, official therapy, hospitality management, those type of degrees. On the other end, on the flip side, there are also some of the disciplines that you can only study at research universities. So, for example, medicine. Um, however, most disciplines, there's a big gray area that you can study at both types of universities, for example, business. So, for you, it's really important to understand the differences between those types of universities to really assess what well, we are, which one would fit you best. So as a start, the universities of applied sciences, when we think of history, a bit of history lecture here, um, they were founded with a very profession focus. So, you know, right off the bat, you would know quite soon what you would become after completing a degree. Um, and that's why they're so profession oriented and except for gaining hard skills, like very knowledge, things and like skills that you would utilize in your job they're also very much focused on soft skills development like teamwork communications that type of stuff whereas research universities you they are more subject oriented meaning that you will study a subject but what you will become after studying that subject nine out of ten times it's a bit less defined compared to universities of applied sciences now as the name suggests universities of applied sciences offer applied based research which means that instead of you know, at both types of institutions, you will get exposed to the why, the academic framework. So why is something the way it is? However, at applied sciences, that is, instead of diving into the why more, there's more of a focus on the how. So now we know the why, 
but how does it work out and how is it being applied to a certain framework, for example, by an organization? Whereas at research universities, it's tradition research-based research, meaning that instead of after identifying the why and getting exposed to that, instead of diving into the how, you're more focused on the why. So it's more psychological, it's more analytical um, in that sense. And that's why the focus points are different as well. Um, so, as I said, it's really focused on how it research at the universities of applied sciences, how is it being implemented by organizations, um, whereas research universities are more focused on the analytical bit of it. This also becomes evident in the type of lecturers that often teach at those types of universities. At applied sciences, often lecturers have a master's degrees and are working professionals very keen on bringing those examples from the business field into the classroom, as often at research universities, lecturers have less work experience, but are very academic, very analytical, um, and often also hold a PhD. At universities of applied sciences, programs take four years to complete, sometimes three years. There are sometimes accelerated programs, which I will talk about in a bit as well. Um, and at research universities, it takes three years to complete. The reason for that is because at universities of applied sciences, there's a mandatory component called an internship, which means working for a company for 20 weeks, which often is not embedded at a research university, meaning that less time is needed to complete a degree. Um, yeah. So welcome to the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. We're located in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, the capital. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about three of our programs that we offer in English. The first one is sports studies. It is studying a business degree, but really focused and tailored towards the sports industry. So I'm going to talk about our international business programs in a bit. Um, you can also work whilst when having obtained such a degree, you can work in sports industry as well. However, this program is very specifically focused on working in the sports industry. And you'll also be taking some sorts of sports classes at a spot for your degree. Um, and I also listed some potential careers that you could pursue after completing this degree. Please note, this is a numerous fixes program. Numerous fixes means selective. That's why the application deadline is January 15th instead of the 1st of May. Um, another program that we offer is physiotherapy. This one is a bit more straightforward in the sense of it really focuses on people you know, recovering from any physical discomfort that they might be facing. It's a free year program. Um, it's quite an intense one. It's an honest program. And also this one is a numerous fixes program, meaning that the application deadline is January 15th. Now, I'm going to spend the rest of my time on international business because those are the, that is the biggest program within our university. However, if you have any specific questions about either facial therapy or sports studies, please do let me know. So welcome to the Amsterdam School of International Business. We sit in the larger university. Um, we offer EFMD accredited business programs, which means that our business programs are internationally recognized by employers as well as universities, which makes it easier to do a master's post graduation if you'd like to. We're based in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, if you haven't been before, I would describe it as a very vibrant city. There's much going on. It's quite small, quite compact, definitely not as big as London, but there's still loads to do. And um, yeah, maybe Martin can say a word or two about it as well after having been to Amsterdam. And the focus of our programs is that at the first half of the program, you'll get exposed to all disciplines of international business. And that's often in the second part, you can specialize and decide on um, yeah, what you want to specialize in, which I will talk to you about in a bit as well. And whilst having obtained a degree from AMSEP, you can work and work anywhere across the globe um, and pursue a master's internationally as well, if you'd like to. And we're located in the southeast of the city, which is in the business district next to headquarters of Adidas and ING. So this is a bit of a student profile because I do feel like it's important for you in order to assess the right fit to know what type of students thrive at our institution. Um, and there are a few things that I want to point out. Well, first of all, it's someone who's very eager and interested in enjoying their life in Amsterdam, of course, because that's why you will be living if you were to decide to study at our institution. Um, it is someone who is very internationally orientated, you know, studying different languages or an interest in different cultures, uh, but also someone who is quite critical and entrepreneurial, 
um, someone who really knows what her dreams are um, and have ambitions to make that work and very practically orientated as we are a University of Applied Sciences. Now, um, I listed our admission requirements on the screen. So as you can see, um, mostly the admission requirements are quite similar. If you complete the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, then you're admissible for both full-time four-year program and the fast track three-year program. However, if we do A-levels and GCSEs, then it is a bit different. Um, then in order for the four-year program, you would need to have taken four GCSEs and two A-levels, including English and mathematics. Um, and for the three-year program, you would need to have taken three GCSEs and three A-levels, including English and mathematics. Now, in the Netherlands, um, I often get this question, like how about extracurricular activities or interviews or essays, that type of stuff. Well, in the Netherlands, the reasoning and society is based on the following. If a program is non-selective, which we are not, then, you know, a university should not really be looking at more things than admission requirements and credentials. Um, so because we're not a numbers fixes program, we're non-selective. Anyone who meets the admission requirements is interested in studying with us. So we won't take into consideration any extracurriculars um, that you've done, or we won't do an interview or ask you to write an essay. However, having said that, I do feel like it's important to make more informed decisions to really know what you sign up for, because like it's quite an investment financially and personally as well. Now, as I said, we offer two degrees in international business. Um, the four year takes four years to complete, the three year three years. There are a couple of differences that I wanna point out, for example, as part of the four-year program, you are able to choose an, an additional language, which is not possible in the three-year program, um, meaning that one specialization track less is being offered in the three-year program compared to the four-year program, which is global business communications. Now, what does the program look like? Like, what are you really going to study? Let's first talk about the four-year program. The four-year program, the first half of the program, as I said, is going to be very generic. You'll be taking all disciplines for international business, a bit of marketing, a bit of finance, a bit of supply chain, a bit, a bit of HR. And the reason for that is because even though you might become a marketer or financial controller, working at an organization, knowing the different disciplines and knowing their basic functions and needs, it is going to help you to work with colleagues from different departments. That's one. And secondly, it is also going to help you in determining what type of direction you would like to uh, yeah, take your career and what potentially what type of career you want to do by trying out the different disciplines. Now, there is something called Co-Creative Entrepreneurship 1 and Co-Creative Entrepreneurship 2, which is part of the second semester in the first year, which is all about launching your own company. So it, you need to launch your own company, a real company with fellow classmates, you know, come up with a business model. How are you going to generate money? What is the product or service that you're going to offer? You need to manufacture the product. Um, you need to deliver it to customers. You need to do the after sales, et cetera, et cetera, the whole cycle of running a business. Um, I remember when I was a student, I found it quite intimidating and overwhelming. I was like, oh, I'm not really sure how to do it in my first year. However, it is a very interesting and good experience because that's when you're going to see how all the different disciplines are all interlink, and it's important to make sure they're all in sync and there's a holistic overview. The second year builds upon the first year. Once again, still quite gener generic, but it builds upon the knowledge that you've obtained in the first year and really dives into detail more. And you can start picking your own electives, meeting modules of choice on what you want to study, which could be a language or a non-language. In the third year, this is when it gets really interesting because this is when you can decide on what you're going to study. Well, first you're going to pick your major after being exposed to all the different disciplines you can decide on what you want to focus on and specialize in. Then in the second semester, you'll be doing a global exchange semester if you'd like to. It's only um, it's only mandatory for Dutch students, but this basically means studying at a university, one of our partner institutions abroad. Um, I did mine at Universidad San Pablo in Madrid, Spain, but friends of mine, they went to Sweden, Australia, LA, New York, um, South Africa, wherever you name it. And, we most likely will have a partner institution there. And in the fourth year, you will basically be on placement the full year. So you'll be in industry, one semester of working for a company, 20 weeks, like a regular full-time employee, 
And in second semester, you'll be writing your thesis dissertation. However, that one is very specifically linked to a company, which is another difference compared to a research university. So at our institution, instead of researching a subject, you would research a certain business case for a very particular company, and you would need to pitch your findings at the end of it. Now, the three-year program is quite similar. First half of the program, so the first one half year, very generic. Second one half year, you can specialize. Now, you can tell that there are a couple of differences. For example, there's a combined internship and thesis instead of one semester of internship and one semester of thesis, so that's a big difference. There's no opportunity to launch your own company. Um, there's no opportunity, unfortunately, due to time to study an additional language. So there are a couple of differences. And I would say the key difference is that when you look at a very traditional program at research university and a pr traditional program at applied sciences, then the three-year program sits in between. It's more academic, less hands-on compared to the four-year program, but it's more hands-on compared to a research university. So practically speaking, what this means is that for example, modules like launching your own company is not part of it. However, in the other modules, you will be doing case studies as well. Um, so it's just not as extensive. Also something that I see is students who did international baccalaureate diploma program, for example. Those are the type of students that often thrive in a three-year program and not so much in a four-year program. So that is something to bear in mind. Um, yeah. So let's imagine that you want to be challenged a bit more because you don't really feel like this is challenging enough. Then you can decide to do a double degree, um, meaning spending one full academic year instead of one semester, either at the Berlin School of Economics and Law. And recently we also launched a double degree with ASIC Business School in Madrid, Spain. Or you can decide to take on some extra modules called honors modules during your degree. So. Something to bear in mind is there is a portal in the Netherlands called StudyLink, which most likely is the first point to go to, regardless of the university that you want to apply for. There are a few exceptions to the rule. To the rule. However, for most universities in the Netherlands, you would need to apply through StudyLink. Um, select Login Without DigiD, take it from there, and then you would first need to create a profile, then um, and select the program and institution that you want to apply for. Then you will get an email from that institution and then you will need to upload all your documents, including transcript of records at the respective university. At our institution, we have something called the Triangle of Support. As you can see, the student is central. In the first two years, students get assigned a mentor. So they will also be placed in mentor classes of maximum 30 students um, in which their mentor is the first point of contact for any matter. And then they will be forwarded to either the study advisor if it concerns academic matters, for example, if a module is too challenging or they want to be challenged a bit more. Uh, and there's also a study counselor in case a student is facing any mental or personal challenges that affects their study progress. So after graduation, I would say more or less 92% of our jobs, uh, of our students, go into the labor market and find a job, whereas 15% of our students pursue a master's. And these are some of the job roles that I listed out. As you can see, it's very diverse because that very much depends on how you designed your final two years um, at university, because that's really going to impact to quite some extent the type of career that most likely you are going to pursue. Um, in terms of country, as I said, you can work anywhere across the globe. These are some examples of our alumni where they end up working, including organizations. So it could be, for example, in banking, but also in sports industry, for example, like Adidas um, or governmental organizations, um, etc. It's quite a diverse degree. Now, and post graduation, you could also decide to do um, a joint master's in global sustainable business management with Northumbria University that's being offered at our Amsterdam campus um, or digital driven business. Now, to address the elephant in the room, um, housing is something that's quite challenging, regardless what city you, you decide to study in uh, in the Netherlands. So this is really something to take into consideration from a very early stage. Um, for, me, for more information, please navigate to amsterdamuas.com and scroll down under quick links. There is a section called housing in Amsterdam. 
um, we do offer some assistance, but unfortunately it's not enough for all our international students. And it is important to look at a private market as well. I listed some of the agents um, and housing providers that are active on the private market you know, investigate it, be on top of it, see like when the registrations open, do they work on first come, first served, or the longer you register, that type of thing. Um, because, for example, there's Room that are now, which is a great resource, but that one really takes into consideration the longer you're registered, the higher your ranking you will be. So let's say there's room available and 20 students are interested and one that has been registered the longest, that one will get priority. Um, so look into those ones as well. Like I'm not sure what grade you're in, but let's say you're looking to search university in a year or in two years, those are good uh, websites to sign up for as well. Room, it's literally called room.nl, um, for example. I will put it in chat in a bit as well. And of course, beware of scammers, unfortunately. There are people who are trying to take advantage of this situation. So yeah, bear that in mind. Now, um, before opening up the floor and passing it on to you to ask any questions, if you have any, um, I just want to point out that we have an online open evening on the 31st of October from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, I put a QR code there. You can't register yet um, because you, the registrations will open at the start of the new academic year. However, if you scan the QR code, you can set up an alert um, just to make sure that you don't miss out on important information. And if you happen to be in Amsterdam or planning to tra travel to Amsterdam, um, then there will be an on-campus open day on the 4th of November, which is also a really good way to meet with students, meet lecturers, feel the vibe, that type of thing. Um, and also check out our social media channels, especially during COVID, we've been really trying to share more testimonials, personal stories, that type of stuff, um, to really for you to get a feel of who we are as an institution. And now, without further ado, let's open up the floor or any questions. Thank you, Jose. That was really, really um, complete. And it was really great to hear more about uh, the programs in English on offer at um, Amsterdam uh, University of Applied Sciences. Before we get to some of the questions that are in the chat, I have a few questions if you don't mind. So some of the students kind of got in touch with me before and they gave me some specific questions. <laughs> Now, um, I'm going to pick your brain, but about kind of a wider group of Dutch universities, if you don't mind. Sure. And so one of the, so you mentioned the two types of universities, applied sciences and research universities. Now, because I was lucky enough, as you mentioned, to come and visit the Netherlands and tour some of these universities, I remember there's a third type hidden within the universities, uh, the research universities, um, which some UK students are interested in. And I was wondering if you would be happy to tell us just a little bit about university colleges. Sure, my pleasure. To be honest, it's not really my expertise. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try my best to best inform you. And please feel free to correct me or add uh, as we speak, Martin, because you had the pleasure of uh, going to Leiden University College. So basically, university colleges are part of research universities, so they're very academic. However, it works slightly different. It is, you know, it's smaller. It's definitely small uh, scale. Um, that's as a starter, and it's more flexible in terms of curriculum. I think like students at university colleges are more are more flexible in terms of setting their own curriculum um, and defining their interests. And there are tons of university colleges in the Netherlands, as for example, well, yeah, there are just tons. Of many research universities do have a university college linked to their university. Um, I would say something to bear in mind if you're looking and are interested in in university colleges, like even though they're quite similar in terms of like small scale, um, compact, the type of disciplines that are being offered or that they proud themselves with are different. And um, so really be critical about that. Like even though you might want to go for a more of a flexible curriculum, really feel like, okay, so what would what am I most interested in? Um, is it, for example, business or is it international relations or, you know, that type of thing? Because that often also determines the type of university college that would yeah that would best fit you 
Yeah, and something that I remember about university colleges, which I thought was quite interest, was their focus on the liberal arts and sciences, meaning that that's it. Students are getting a bit of a broader curriculum before kind of starting to specialize a bit later on, which, of course, also as a counselor who works with U.S. applications, reminds me of some of that liberal arts tradition. Um, OK, so let's. Well, so another question that I had is kind of going back to some of the numerous fixes programs. So you mentioned that they are selective. So, you know, numerous fixes, fixed number, right, of kind of applicants coming in. Can you um, are there any other specific requirements or are you does it depend on the program, on the right. university? Um, is there like a grade minimum for international applicants? Right. So I would say that depends. It's one of those it depends questions, because let me tell you a bit more about numerous fixes that generally speaking, yes, numerous fixes, they have a cap on the number of students, not only internationally, but also nationally, how many students they can take as part of their program and as part of their intake. So, for example, at our institution, uh, because international business is not numerous fixes, we're non-selective. However many students we get, we're going to cater for that amount of students. Whereas at numerous fixes programs, there's already a cap. Now, there are different types of numerous fixes. So it is important to check the program pages. So the first one is actually quite straightforward. It's a lottery system, which I think is based on grades, but I'm not entirely sure. It's either a random lottery or it's based on grades, either of those. Um, and that's nationally organized. So for example, when it comes down to, yeah, there are just a couple of programs that you can only apply for twice. Um, and so you can apply for two numerous fixes programs, of which only one if it concerns medicine and psychology. And um, can, can UK, so can non-EU passport holders apply for medical programs in the Netherlands? The, Sorry to cut you off there. No problem, it's all good. It depends on whichever country they're planning on practicing medicine. I would say it is one of those disciplines which I need to be, which I want to be very transparent and open about this. It is a bit tricky in the sense of if you're interested, for example, in studying international business, it's quite straightforward. It's quite easy to have a business degree and work in another country. But for example, when it comes down to architecture, when it comes down to medicine, you know, uh, facial therapy, those type of programs, it often gets a bit more tricky. So my advice would be, if you're interested in one of those programs, then have a look. Well, first of all, think of like, okay, hypothetically speaking, of course, nine out, of the, nine out of 10 times you don't really know yet because you're so young. It's quite hard to anticipate what the future is going to bring. But if you already have a bit of an idea of, I want to practice medicine in this type of country, or I want to, you know, work as an architect there, then I do feel like it is important for you to check nationally what are the requirements and how does it all fit in? Um, because this is very country specific. Then another type of numerous fixes programs are selective programs. In, those are talent based. So let's say, for example, oh, I can actually take international sports studies as an example, our program. That one is uh, talent based, meaning talent and interest based, meaning that you should have those athletic skills to some extent because it's a crossover between sports and business what you're going to study. However, also like, okay, so what are your ambitions? They really look at like program fit. How well do you fit in the program? So for example, you would need to take part in an interview, I think also an assessment day, um, and that's up to each program to determine how they want to do it. University colleges are a bit the same. They might have some additional requirements in terms of grades, but they often very much look at like the cultural fit, ambition fit, that type of thing. Um, and that also, for example, applies to hospitality schools. Now, and then there's the final one, and I want to solely skills base, and that is, for example, when it comes down to art academies, music conservatories, that type of thing. Like they really look at like what's your portfolio that you have to bring, um, and that is a very big part of the decision making process. So, yeah, in a nutshell, it depends. So a good place for students to start is to look at the specific programs at the specific universities. Can they find all of that on StudyLink or should they be going to university websites? Um, no, they should be going to university websites. What I, wanna, what I would like to do for you as well, there's a tool called 
a tool called Study Finder. Um, and basically, if if you know roughly what type of discipline you want to pursue and what you want to study, but you're not really sure what institutions offer these programs, which I can fully imagine, then Study Finder is a good tool. Um, I will, where is it? Oh, there's no chat function here, is there? No. Can you maybe share your screen and? Oh yeah, that's yeah, a good one. Um, very quickly, so here we go. Yeah, so this is what it's called, study in and out. Um, so if you just Google, actually I can show you. If you go to uh, Google, a good type in study finder, it's the first one that pops up. Now, this is a really easy and good tool because like it really allows you to, as I said, if you know roughly what you want to study, but you're not really sure where or what institutions offer it, then this is a good place to start. So let's say you want to study medicine, business. Yeah, actually, can we put in business? Because that will tackle one of our questions in the chat about some of the okay. other universities in the Netherlands that offer business. Okay, so here you go. So business is, you know, there are 501 programs that offer business. But then, of course, you can filter That's that. So, right? Yeah, great. So let's say bachelor, right? Because like I should, you're all high school. So let's take it step by step. Let's go for bachelor fit. As you can see, it lists all the type of business. So also business analytics, um, international business, tons of international business, as you can see. Um, here we are. That's our institution. Um, yeah. So this is a really good place for you to start a creative business. But for example, if you already know, like, oh, you know, I really like business, but I also like it in combination with, I know, like IT, for example, then, uh, oh yeah, business analytics, you know, then you can put it in as well. So the more specific, here you go. So the more specific your search is, the more specific results you'll get. But this is a good place to start for sure. Fantastic. That's a really great tool. Thank you so much. Um, and so we have another question here in the chat uh, about extracurriculars. So are they important or disregarded? So am I right in kind of thinking that for a lot of programs, grades will be most important, but then for example, at some of the university colleges where you do have to write essays, extracurriculars do come into play. Yeah, so it really depends on whether the program is selective or non-selective. Uh, because as I said, in our case, we're non-selective, and meaning that if you meet the admission requirements, either the full IB diploma or the right number of A-levels and GCSEs, you're in. So we, for international business, won't consider um, extracurriculars, or we won't do interviews, or write, ask you to write an essay, that type of stuff. However, if you're interested in a selective program that, of course, changes completely the ball game, and then it is super important to make sure that you really stand out of the, your of the crowd in order to get admitted to the program. So, yeah. Great. And so we'll tackle this one. I have more questions afterwards, but let's get to a few in uh, our Q&A here. So could you outline the academic year? So, I mean, in the UK, students are looking at starting university in October. Um, and could you give us a bit of an idea of what that looks like in the Netherlands? Right. So um, it, so for us, for example, it, you either take it as part of a block system or a semester system. If it's if the program is structured in a block system, then you'll be taking um, in total four blocks, um, which comes down to two semesters. Essentially, we start our classes at the start of September, often the final week of August is intro week, and then we'll start classes. Often what happens is like for the block system, there's eight weeks of lectures um, in which you can in which you take particular modules, eight weeks, and then you will take a final exam uh, in week nine. And then there's often a bit of a break to get some breath, or not sometimes depending on time constraints, you will immediately proceed to the next block. Now, with the semester system, it's a bit different. Instead of eight weeks, it's 16 weeks of teaching, and then week 19 is exams. Uh, so it depends a bit on the structure, but roughly that, that is it. Um, yeah, so classes start beginning of September. You get two weeks off during Christmas, so in, with Christmas slash New Year's. Often there's like another break in May. Um, there are many bank holidays in May as well. And then often reset week is the first week of July. If you don't need to take any resets, then essentially you're off for 
July and August. Fantastic. And coming back to, um, to Study Finder, are all of those programs in English or were some of those programs in Dutch as well? They're all in English. Yeah, because this is very much um, yeah being put in place for international students. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, so a couple other questions that I that I have um, about uh, the Netherlands is, so we know that the Dutch government is talking about kind of changing uh, some uh, elements of international recruitment. Um, and I know that you're still not 100% sure of what that will look like. But I think that there are just a couple things that um, that you already do know or do suspect. And I was wondering if you might be willing to touch upon some of those changes. Sure. So something that I want to clarify right off the bat is these meshes are not being put in place to, to say like, we don't welcome international students. It's the complete opposite. Like, you know, we do value the international aspects so, so much. Like, you know, Amsterdam is quite an international hub. Many startups, scale-ups, multinationals are located in Amsterdam. It's quite easy to get around without speaking Dutch in Amsterdam or in the Netherlands in general, in most cities. So I just want to make sure that you don't feel like there's now all of this sentiment of like, oh, internationals are not welcome anymore. That's not the fact. The fact is what's happening now is we want to make sure to, because like the Dutch educational system is all focused on accessibility, like high quality education in a very accessible manner. That's why, for example, if you look at the admission process, you know, it's, we don't, we not, there are many non-selective programs who don't require you, to, well, who, who actually don't invite you for an interview. They don't ask you to do any extracurriculars because the Dutch mentality is very much about like, accessibility. Now, what has happened, um, more and more students have become interested in studying in the Netherlands, which is amazing. We're very happy about that. But it's just like, we just want to make sure that they also get like proper guidance because, you know, it's also for, yeah, just proper guidance and making sure that we can provide on what, what we promised we would provide. So that's a bit of a discussion that's happening now. Now, so all the meshes that they've been speculating about, and still the government doesn't really know what type of shape it's going to get, what this practically means, but they all get towards making sure that quality remains good um, and remains accessible. So some of the things that they might be talking about, but this is once again, very much speculating. So, you know, don't quote me on this, but it's for example, about like helping students with integrating into Netherlands a bit more in terms of language, but also career-wise, like, you know, making sure that post-graduation, if you would like to stay, that you can stay. Um, and that finding employment wouldn't be much of a challenge, that type of thing. So that's what I'm very much looking at right now. Um, yeah, so once again, please don't feel like you're not welcome. It's just, it's all about safeguarding high quality and making sure that we can that the country can cater for national and international students in the best way. Great. And so kind of piggybacking on that, can we talk, uh, can we come back a little bit to talk about housing? Because I know that this is such a common question, you know, students, do I have guaranteed accommodation? You know, if they're, especially if they're going to be changing countries for, um, you know, their undergraduate studies. So, you know, one of the things I, I try to kind of communicate to students is that, you know, the Netherlands, applying to the Netherlands isn't a backup, you know, um, even though, because in, in the Netherlands, you don't rank your universities, do you? No. No, there's no this university is better or worse and you're not in competition so much, are you? No. So indeed, you know, it's all about finding the right fit. And what you will see is if you're going to utilize study finder, for example, let's say you're interested in studying international business, right? You can study it at so many institutions in the Netherlands. And I would definitely advise you not only to have a look at our institution, but also have a look at other colleagues just just for you to understand what differences are, because even in, you know, to some to a large extent, the programs are the same. Content-wise, they are slightly different, but also more importantly, and what actually the biggest difference is, is that the type of student in each city is different. Like 
we are a tiny country. I do get it. We're very, very small. However, you can tell, like, and I think you've experienced it yourself whilst you were on this Dutch university tour, the type of student that studies in Amsterdam is different than the one who decides to study in The Hague or in Rotterdam or like in any other city. So first and foremost, I would say, make sure that you're aware of those differences. Um, and yeah, you just know a bit on what you're looking after. And definitely housing is not something that I'm going to sugarcoat. It is challenging. Of course, there are diff it is different across the country. There are some cities which don't have as big of a challenge as other cities. However, roughly speaking, yes, it is challenging. And yes, as you said, make sure that Netherlands is not a backup plan. Make sure that you're on top of it. And also it depends on the program because like, for example, there's some university colleges who do guarantee housing either for part of the studies or uh, the, the whole duration of studies. There's some, I think hospitality school, they also have a certain system in place. Once again, either it's partially or fully, um, but there are also some institutions like, unfortunately, the university that I represent, we don't guarantee housing. So, you know, those, so as you can see, the situation differs per country. Now, what what can you do about it, practically speaking, because this is, I suppose, something that's on your mind, be on top of it. So let's say you're interested in uh, starting September 2024, next academic year, make sure to put in your application in StudyLink on the 1st of October. That's when StudyLink opens. You don't need to have graduated by then. Don't worry about that. You just need to submit your transcript of records, but at least to make sure to get a process going, um, you know, be on top of that. Then also something else like if you, for example, if you know that, oh, you know, I, I consider studying in the Netherlands in two years, then also sign up for websites like room.nl. Um, I will quickly screen share and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, so this website is called room.nl. It's also in English. Um, so you can change the language setting at the top, which I will show you here. So if you click on Netherlands, you can switch it up to English. Uh, but basically how this system works, it's like first come first served. Uh, no, sorry. It's like the longer you're registered, the higher your ranking will be. So let's say you're interested in a room and there are like 10 others who are interested. The one who's been registered the longest, that one will get priority. Um, and there are a couple of more of these websites that um, work the same way. It is on our website. So if you go navigate to amstemuas.com, then all the information is there, so don't worry about it. Just scroll down here to housing and then yeah, it's uh, it's all listed there. Um, so those are some of the things. Also, something that you should do next to it is really like make an inventory of what the situation is like per city and per institution. As I said, some programs might offer partially housing or fully housing throughout the whole study. Um, but also, for example, there are others like the social hub. That one works differently. It's a private land, a private agency. Um, who owns housing. However, how they work is first come, first served. So it is important in October already, start looking into it. Like, okay, let's say I'm interested in the social hub. Fair enough. When do registrations open? Like, what would I need in order to be able to register? That type of thing. So really make sure that you start off with your research, you know, who are the key marketplaces, what are the opportunities and what are deadlines? You know, note down all these deadlines, mark those in your calendar. Um, so it definitely does require proactivity because we're unlike, sadly enough, like British and American universities. You know, I did my master's in the UK, so I know I enjoy this student campus life. Unfortunately, we don't have something like that in Netherlands. Some universities do, but that is very limited. Thank you. Um, I remember, yes, um, uh, when when I was in the Netherlands, I also remember like the Facebook groups and sometimes, you know, students leaving from one accommodation, passing it on to the next generation. So I think the word that you used, proactive, I think that's the key here. And I also think that it is a good way of describing the, the you know, uh, part of the fit for students that would thrive uh, at universities in the Netherlands, because I, I remember one of your colleagues saying, you know, in the Netherlands, we'll support you, but we won't handhold you, yeah. you know, 
this is what you need to do. Now you need to do this, you know, so so it's true. It's a really good place to start thinking that students need to take this process into their own hands. For sure. Yeah. And it's also like I remember when I applied for my master's in the UK, it was like the support that I got and the much the amount of hand holding that I got. It was just like for me, it was like mind blowing because, you know, I did my undergrad here in Amsterdam. So I wasn't used to it either. And then I was, so yeah, that is key. Like, make sure that, and that's also when it comes down to support of support roles in our institution. Once you are a student, as I said, we do have, I showed you, we do have a study counselor, study advisor. So the system is there. However, what we do expect from students is that they're comfortable with speaking up to their mentor and be like, you know, I need some help. And they don't necessarily need to tell the mentor what it exactly is they need help with. You just need to tell them that they need help. And then you'll be forwarded to the correct colleague um, and the correct person to talk to. But yeah, it is important to be proactive. Great. Okay, so I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. Um, I think maybe that is a great place to wrap up. Um, actually, I do have two final questions. So because you've been a student in Amsterdam and a student in, in Newcastle, tell us about your highlight in Amsterdam as a student and your highlight in Newcastle as a student. Oh boy, wow, I don't even know where to start. Um, <laughs> highlight of Amsterdam. So I did my exchange semester in Madrid, Spain, uh, which was really nice. I really, really enjoyed it thoroughly. It was a great, great experience. Something that I really appreciate about Amsterdam is, yes, it is the capital. Yes, there's so much bus, like oh, the number of restaurants, cafes, uh, comedy cafes. Um, I don't know, like, uh, well, let's say your religion or like, I don't know, like there's so many opportunities for you to get involved um, and to find the community. Once again, if you're proactive and you're interested in that. So it is a very vibrant city, yet it's quite compact because I, what I love about the Netherlands and especially about Amsterdam, especially during summer, is like getting on my bike, biking around from one part to the other. It's just great. Or like when it's nice weather, all the terraces are full, people are outdoors or they're all in the parks and then just doing a picnic there. Um, there are really good festivals in summer as well. You know, there's a big festival season with different types of genres. So, you know, some of my friends are really into what, into techno and hardcore, but I don't really like it. So I'm more like like the Latino vibe. So I like that. Um, there's so many different musicals and like events, food truck festivals. So there's always something to do, especially during spring and summer, which I absolutely love. Um, also just sitting next to the canal, just, you know, get a coffee, get an iced coffee, sit next to the canal with a friend, catch up, enjoy the view. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy that. Um, so that's one thing that I really enjoyed about Amsterdam. And I enjoyed the program. Um, I found it a really good program. And my exchange semester. One thing that I absolutely loved about Newcastle is, yeah, I don't know, Newcastle is just amazing. Geordies are the best, like all for the Geordies. Like, to be very honest, my plan, funny enough, was to do my master's in uh, Edinburgh, but then, you know, there were too few applications, so my master got cancelled. So I was looking into alternatives, and I ended up going to Northumbria University in Newcastle, and it was just, it was amazing. I, It's even, it's much, much smaller than Amsterdam, but yet there's so much to do, which I absolutely loved. The people are extremely friendly, extremely easy to get around, um, and to get connected with, I love the fact that the university had over 100 societies. So, you know, personally, I didn't really make friends with my classmates, but I was part of a society and those were really my mates. It was really great. Um, I love the Northeast of England, the coastline, fish and chips. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they, should, uh, they should get you to represent the University of Newcastle as well. You're really <laughs> to us. <laughs> and you. it's a great student city, Newcastle. Yeah. I bet. I bet it is. Yeah. Well, Jose, thank you so, so much. It was fantastic having you. You are a fountain of knowledge um, and we truly appreciate it. Um, I think you said that you were happy with students contacting you uh, sure. if they have any questions. And if you happen to be around in Amsterdam, but it doesn't happen to be during the open day or anything like that, just let me know. 
Great. Well, that's a very generous offer. So thank you so much. Have a lovely evening out in Amsterdam and what is certainly going to be a, a fantastic evening uh, at the canals with everybody out. So I'll see you soon. I'll see you in Miami. See you in Miami in a couple of weeks. Enjoy. Have a great evening. Y'all, and hopefully this helps you to understand a bit more about the Dutch higher educational system. Thank you so much, Jose. Thank you, everybody. Um, and for those of you who are interested in US applications, I will be at Charterhouse tomorrow. There is a session on creating your Common App accounts at 4.15 in room K06. So I will hopefully see some of you tomorrow as well. So thanks again, Jose. Goeiendag and bedankt. <laughs> Graag gedaan. Tot ziens. <laughs> Tot ziens.